simply means that on the east side was facing the rising sun okay. early in their history while those who came into their inheritance on the west side were facing the setting sun but the fact still remained that all of the children of Jacob all of the children of Israel Jacob whose name has changed Israel whether they came into their inheritance early or late, the fact remained that if God made the promise, nobody got left out. Uh, somebody in here now, you've been looking at those who came into their inheritance on the east side, young and sometimes young and foolish and didn't even know what to do with what they inherited. The enemy would make you think that you're getting left out. But I'm here to tell you that if you're God's child, you've got an inheritance. Whether you get it on the east side or the west side, facing the rising sun or the setting sun, the fact still remains that if God has called you, your day is coming. You just ought to tell somebody, don't worry about it, your day is coming. Uh, look at the bishop's sister, Sister Beverly. Beverly and I were in school together. We used to sing together in the group. So, you know, some of y'all may look at me like I'm a stranger, but I'm, I'm at home. This is, this is Michigan. I'm at home. And we're glad to be here. I'm going to be as brief as possible tonight and then we're going into um, the act of consecration since I'm in that vein let's just turn to uh, Numbers chapter 23 and in Numbers chapter 23 I would begin reading at verse 16. And the Lord met Balaam and put a word in his mouth and said, Go again unto Balak 
and say thus. And when he came to him, behold, he stood by his burnt offering and the princes of Moab with him. And Balak said unto him, What hath the Lord spoken? And he took up his parable and said, Rise up, Balak, and hear. Hearken unto me, thou son of Zippor. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he hath blessed, and I cannot reverse it. He hath not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither hath he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord his God is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. I'll stop at this point. Words of Balaam that God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, shall he not do it? All right. I want to talk just a little bit tonight about a promise fulfilled. A promise fulfilled. Uh, we are here tonight because of a promise uh, that God made to a certain brother, Isaac King. That when the Lord uh, saved him, sanctified him, filled him with the Holy Ghost, he put within him a deep love for God and a quest to study the scriptures. One of the things that always stood out about him was the fact that whenever he came uh, before the congregation, he did not major in a hoop, but he majored in having information. And what God saw in him, God promised that one day I'm going to raise you up and you are going to be a leader of my people. Yeah. This particular chapter deals with a page from the history of ancient Israel. And no matter how I try to get away from the Old Testament, sometimes I, I see a clearer picture of the church in the stories from ancient Israel than I see even sometimes in the New Testament because they are a natural nation uh, with great spiritual overtones. God had delivered the people from bondage in the land of Egypt under the leadership of Moses Moses having been God's chosen man to deliver them by the many plagues which God brought upon the, the land of Egypt. Once he had delivered them from Egypt, they entered into a period of wandering in the wilderness that took 40 years. It really should not have taken that long, but because of their inability to believe God in spite of everything. Right. We can often believe God when the obstacles are not so large. But when there are great obstacles to surmount, somehow Satan does to us what he did to them. And that is, he brings in discouragement. So the people that should have been able to leave Egypt and step into that promised possession approximately 40 to 60 days later, it took 40 years. And one thing you have to notice about God, when God's anger 
was kindled against the children of Israel, he told Moses, get out of the way. I'm going to destroy these people. I'm going to raise up a new nation under you. But Moses said, no, 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 God, don't do that because the nations round about will say uh, that you were not able to bring your people into their possession and look at what the folk will say and God, don't do that. And God seemingly was dissuaded from what he purposed to do by what Moses said. But God really did just what he said. He said, I'm going to destroy them. But instead of doing it in one day, he took 40 years. Because with the exception of Joshua and Caleb, not another grown person entered into the promised land. They wandered 40 years. They didn't go anywhere until all of that old crowd died out. And you can say what you want to. When God determines that he wants to take his people into a new realm, you can fight it if you want to, but whatever God has determined, he will bring it to pass. He'll do it with us, but he'll do it in spite of us. Now, this particular page out of that history comes about as a result of the fact that while they were on their way en route to the promised land, they had to pass through the nation uh, of the Amorites. They sent word to Zihon, the king of the Amorites, if you just let us use the king's highway, and we'll be able to expedite our trip. Uh, we, we, we won't bother anything that's yours. We won't bother your vineyards. We won't bother anything that you have. Just give us free passage. Zahan said, no, you're not coming through here. So he picks a fight with them. As a result of him picking a fight, God allowed Moses and the children of Israel that had had no experience at all in war. They're a nation of slaves. They just came out of Egypt. They haven't had time to train for war. But God anointed them and gave them the power to defeat the Amorites. And once they defeated them, then the Lord said, now take their land. They, they went a little further and they ran into a fellow by the name of Og. Og, the king of Bashan. And, and uh, I've said it before, I did a little study uh, on the giants in the Bible. And it wasn't until I did that study that I really recognized who Og was. And in Deuteronomy 3 and 11, it tells me that he slept in a bedstead that when you get through transferring uh, it into feet and inches, his bed was 13 feet long and six feet wide. So he was really somewhere around 12 or maybe 12 and a half feet tall. Uh, you know, Goliath is the most famous giant in the Bible, but he was a baby. Uh, Goliath was only about nine feet. Og was about 12 feet. But when the children of Israel said, we want to pass through the land of Bashan, Og comes out big giant with his giant army so you won't come through here but the same God that gave them victory over Zion gave them victory over all and, and you got to understand this that whenever we face a problem it doesn't matter what kind of a mountain stand in our way it doesn't matter how the devil tries to block the people of God it doesn't matter whether he comes up with something that you think is a new tool, a new weapon of destruction. The thing you got to understand is the same God that gave you victory in your last battle, you don't have to worry about the next battle. Oh, I tell you, it thrilled my heart when I read that uh, 54th chapter of Isaiah and got down to verse 17 about no weapon. But what really got me was when I read the verse above it. Uh, where the Lord said, you know, I created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire. In other words, God said, before I tell you this 
I want you to know that the one who is fighting you, I created him. I created his weapons. I know what caliber of pistol he's using. I know all of the abilities of the weapon. And because I made the man that made the weapon and put the ingredients in the weapon, I also made you. And I know that nothing is in the weapon that is greater than what I put in you. Therefore, no weapon that's formed against thee shall prosper. You gotta understand that don't worry about the weapons because the God that made the weapons made you. And he put greater stuff in you than he put in the weapon. Oh, when that one sink in, you're going to shout. Hallelujah. Oh, the king of Bashan said, we'll stop him. But God gave Moses and the children of Israel the power to destroy all and his giant army. So, after they have passed through Zion and the Amorites, Og and the Bashanites, they come to the borders of the land of Moab. And they camp out on the borders of Moab. And when they set up their camp on the borders of the land of Moab, Balak said, now wait a minute. Zion tried to stop them with brute force. That didn't work. Og tried to stop them with force. That didn't work. So maybe since these are spiritual people, I'm going to have to use a spiritual force. So he told some of his fellows, go down to that, that, that soothsayer, that guy named Balaam. And let him come up here and put a curse on them. Since I can't stop them with force, Zahan and, and, and Ah couldn't stop them with force. Let me see, can I stop them with a curse? And you can say what you want to. The devil is always trying to play with your mind. Talking about he'll curse you. But I got news for you. Can't nobody curse what God has blessed. I never, thought, I never thought I would live to see a day when people testify, talking about I'm saved and sanctified and baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost and a mighty burning fire and yet scared of witchcraft. And, it, and it's not just down in Louisiana. It's in Michigan too. Scared to go out of the door because somebody sprinkled something on your porch. Talking about this sickness, you know, the doctor can't find what's wrong with it. It's, it's something not natural. I, I, and, and, and I noticed the other day when I went to the hairstylist that they cut off some of my hair and hid it. <laughs> cut off all the mine that I got left. Do whatever you want to do with it. Sprinkle anything you want to sprinkle. But you can't fix me because I've already been fixed. And, and when God gets through fixing you, he fixes you so can't nobody hex you. Can't nobody vex you. Can't nobody hoodoo you. Can't nobody put a curse because I'm walking in the blessings of God. And long as I'm walking in his blessings, there's not a demon in hell. Somebody ought to give God some praise right about now. And when, when Balak's ambassadors went to see Balaam and said, Hey, Balak, Prince of Moab, he wants you to come. There are some people recently come out of Egypt and he, he, he wants you to come and, 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 and put a curse on these folk. Balaam said, spend the night. Let, let, me, let me talk to my God. He went in a prayer meeting. Got up the next morning. Can't go. God told me, don't do it. So, what do they do but wait a few days? Send another group 
uh, with some more shiny gold chains, <laughs> promising elevation yeah. in the courts of Balak. Yeah. I told you I can't go. So the next time another group shows, they got some more glittering rings. All of this you can have. He said, I tell you what, stay the night. Uh, let, me, let me talk to God again. And you got a lot of folk now uh, talking about God help me answer your prayer. God answered your prayer right after you prayed it. You just didn't like to answer. Yeah. A lot of times when we get an answer that we don't like, we say God didn't answer. <laughs> When I came up in the church as a little boy, uh, we were taught, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. And the sisters in the church, they didn't complain so much about, you know, men in the church. But they did say, if there are few, I'm going to wait until God send me one that's saved. And all of those unsaved fellows came, and you spoke in tongues, uh-uh. But finally, Slick Willie showed up. <laughs> he wasn't saved, but he had a pocket full of money and a shining car. And you said, I, I, I believe something in my spirit <laughs> says that this is my husband. <laughs> but you got to understand that if God say no, he means no. And the price doesn't change God's answer. Sometimes we're praying about stuff. We've already got an answer. But we just want God to change. Balaam prayed, Lord, I, I, I know I asked you before, but uh, something in me, in my spirit said that. Maybe I misunderstood you. And the Lord said, all right, Balaam, go ahead. Sometimes God release you to do but you know you don't have no business doing it. God released him. And when God released him, he saddled his jackass. Started moving toward the Balak, king of Moab. And all of a sudden, that fateful jackass started acting funny. He ran out of the road. Balaam hit it. What's wrong with you? Get back in this road. After a while, he came to a narrow place and he bumped up against the wall. Balaam really got angry. Started beating on him. He went a little bit further and the jackass saw the angel for the third time. So since he couldn't get around him, he just sat down in the middle of the highway. And when he sat down, he crushed Balaam's foot. This one, Balaam really got angry. He said, I wish I had a sword. Not only would I beat you, I'd kill you. And at this point, God opens the mouth of a jackass. I don't care what you say, it's a tragic thing. When a jackass can see what a sanctified preacher can see. <laughs> preacher couldn't see the judgment of God, but the jackass saw it. And then opened his mouth, and the jackass started prophesying to the prophet. I know we 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 at a point in our church now when we we're dealing with a real sensitive and sticky thing. And we got a whole lot of our brothers that said, if this church ever start to ordain women, or let women pastor, we gone. And yet they preach about God anointing a jackass, anointing a rooster. But they're ready to leave the church if he anoints a woman. Oh, I better let that one alone. 
It's a shame when a jackass can see what a preacher can't see. Brothers, y'all pray for me. All right, I decided to pray for the saints. Finally, I'm getting ready to quit. When Balaam got to his destination, God had met him on the highway and said, you go on, but don't you say anything other than what I give you to say. So Balak showed Balaam the children of Israel. <laughs> Got up on a mountain and looked and saw them. A couple of millions of them sprawled out. And when he looked, the Spirit of God fell on him. And he started prophesying that these people are blessed. Balak said, no, 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 no. I must have shown him from the wrong angle. So he went where he could see them from a certain angle. Not the whole nation, but just see a part. And see, it's the way the enemy is. If he can't stop you all together, he'll say, well, let me look at their finances. And he'll examine your finance. See, can, can I stop them from being financially blessed? And if that don't work, he'll look at you from the other angle. Let me look at their health. Right. That there's some disease that runs in their family. If I can't stop them on the financial side, maybe I can stop them on the side of their physical health. But from every angle that Balak showed Balaam, the children of Israel, he had to confess they are blessed. Oh, let me tell you, when God blesses you, it does not matter how the enemy tries to dissect you and cut you in pieces. And I got to find something wrong with him over here. Find something wrong with him over there. When you have the mark of God's approval, when the enemy gets to examining you piece by piece, he's got to say, you're blessed. I think that's what God wants us as a body of believers to do. Stop downing one another. Yeah, 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 yeah. I believe it's Psalm 129 and 8. I use this all the time. The blessing of the Lord be upon you. Huh? We bless you in the name of the Lord. I just wish everybody in here would stand up now and tell at least three people around you the blessing of the Lord be upon you. I bless you. Yeah. 
here tonight. Isaac. Woo. The name means lost. A lot of folks said, preacher, it ain't gonna happen. But who got the last laugh? Stop the rumor mill. But contrary to what the rumor mill said, 